We're here tonight at uh, Creative Social Presents, and uh, I've got the great pleasure of once again talking to Flo Heiss. Hello, Flo. Hello, hello. Hi. Tonight, the theme is storytelling. Uh, it seems to be the, the, the vogue uh, right now. So I've been told. Yeah. Yeah. Has anything changed, or, or has it always been storytelling? Um, I think so, yeah. I think it's always been storytelling since people started telling stories. It's all about that. But maybe the way that stories are being told are different nowadays. Yeah. And does a, uh, does a story, is a story and a campaign the same thing? Is a story and a campaign the same thing? Uh, it can be, doesn't have to be. Um, maybe it needs to be more and more like a story for people to get engaged with um, a lot of stuff happening around them. The stories need to be interesting and new stories are hard to find. Um, maybe a story and an idea are the same thing or an idea is best told in a story. So I think they can be the same, don't have to be the same. Campaign sounds more like sort of an advertising construct. Um, I've hit your microphone yeah, with my pipe there, <laughs> my prop. Um, and so do, do you think it's, it's more about trust? Is it, uh, it, uh, does a story create more trust than a campaign? If there's the truth in it, yeah, then, then uh, there's trust, I think, is the thing that is really important nowadays to get people engaging with your brand and engaging with your product because you can't just tell a story that isn't true anymore because you'll be found out like that. Um, and I think that that has maybe changed. I mean, you could argue that advertising and marketing nowadays is the only thing that tells the truth in, in newspapers <laughs> and all the other stories that go around it are fictional and made up so i think it's it's kind of shifted and advertising is has to tell a truth um and marketing in general and brands need to be truthful for people to believe in them and buy into them and if you do that then you've got a good good um good story going or something like that yeah, yeah. and is that because buyers have become more savvy yeah. I think essentially what's happening is that, that um, brand and product are the same thing. So you could even argue that good products don't need advertising. I mean, that, that is it's common sense, really. That, that's nothing new. But I think you, if you're looking at um, new brands and new products coming up on the market, you will find that the, the good ones or the ones that are penetrating pop culture need less and less advertising for people to be involved in them and knowing about them. Yeah, totally. And I think it's also, there's the opportunity for people to become part of a brand more when it's a story than if it's a campaign. Yeah, and a story by its very nature, I think, yeah. leaves a lot of open space for people to project themselves into it. So I think there is, there is scope for people to be part of a story. Um, it doesn't have to be like that. There's a, there are great stories that are being told on TV in 30 seconds that... Um, are, in, are closed stories, if you like. You know, a TV ad can be a closed story and it's still good, and maybe there's still room for people to project themselves into it. But I think the best sort of interactive story, or the best story that I have seen for a long time in advertising is that famous poster, um, um, I Never Read The Economist, um, or is it something, something trainee, um, 42, you know. Um, and all, what I read is, is, I never read The Economist and I read that, but what happens in my head is a, is a different story. And it, there's a lot, a lot left for people to interpret that. And when uh, someone else will tell that story okay, much yeah, better we'll, than I will, we'll, we'll look it up and, uh, and get back to you. Yeah, here. yeah. And so thinking about agencies, um, yeah. the people of an agency compared to perhaps you know, it was always about work. You know, the, the what work had you done, what award did you want, had won. Yeah. Do you think for for an agency's success, it's becoming more about the people in the agency and, and actually that's part of an agency story as well. Is, is, is there a shift there that's happening? Yeah, I think it's both. I think we, we, um, we talk a lot about um, saying and doing um, at there and, you know, previously the doing was the thing that everybody was talking about. You know, in a digital agency you need to be doing and in an advertising agency you need to be saying. Increasingly, I think it's really important that the two things are working together. So, um, so you're doing and saying, you're saying and doing in unison and then you've got a great integrated story a great integrated campaign and i think it's still about the awards and it's still about that but it, you know maybe it's also about the people um within an agency within the advertising context i think as well uh 
And do you think agencies have to do a better job at telling their own story or, or does their work actually do that for them? It should be their work telling the story on behalf of the agency. It's always kind of, within our industry, it's always nice to have your own stories within the agency to give you a little bit of, a, of an edge, I think. Um, and, a, and an agency is a good agency if it's got its own internal stories, but I think really the work should be doing the talking. Otherwise, why would you be around? Yeah. And what about individuals? If, if an individual is looking to progress in their career, and obviously with social media now, and people's portfolios or their own websites or their you know, experiences they're able to share of the world online, is, is someone's individual story a vital part of their career now? Yes, if it's part of who you are. You don't have to be on social media to be working in this industry. You don't have to promote yourself. It's not for everybody. Um, if it's part of your fabric and if it's real and if it's truthful to yourself that you are that person, then yes. If you're not on any of those things, I don't mind. If your portfolio is, is made from paper, I don't mind. Um, you don't have to do that. Don't think you're, you, just because it's there, you have to use it. If, if it's your thing, do it. If it isn't, don't. That's a really important message. I think a lot of people get a sense of there's pressure to be on them, there's pressure to do things, and, and you're right. If it's not what they're about, it's not going to represent them effectively. No, no. Be real. You know, be who you are and be true, true to yourself, and there's no one recipe. Do it in your way, do it in your style, do it in, in how it feels right to you. And if that is being analogue and non-social, that's fine. <laughs> that's totally fine. Great, that's a, that's a great message, Flo. Well, thanks for joining us. I uh, look forward to hearing you speak tonight. Yeah, I'm just going to have to make it up now. Bye. <laughs> thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and share it with others. Source interview people from London's creative industry so you can learn from their experiences. To see more of our videos, subscribe to the channel now. And if there's someone you'd like to see interviewed, even yourself, then tweet us, put it in the comments, or get in touch via email. Thanks again.